All right. Um, so guys, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to find roots of a quadratic function. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's not Disneyland, but it's it's our job for the day, so we're doing it. But uh, roots are where a, a function touches the x-axis. So we want to find out where to touch the x-axis. Why do we care about that? Well, um, you could do like a word problem, for example, and we're going to do that next class, actually, where if you think about an object that's being thrown through the air, it makes like a para parabola-like shape, and where it lands on the ground would be like the root. So we'll see that then. Um, so we're going to do that today, so finding those roots. All right, so what is a root? Um, they're also, just so you guys know, they're also known as zeros or x-intercepts, so just fair game on a test or something. Um, I may not say find the roots, I may say find the zeros, or I may say find the x-intercepts. That's the same thing. Okay, so make sure you guys are prepared for that. Um, so what are they? Those are the points where it intersects the x-axis. So we have that right here. Now, when we're looking at those points where it touches the x-axis, we know some of those question marks up there. What, what are some of the question marks that we know? You can tell right away. Huh? Zero. What, okay, so which ones are the zeros? The y value. When you're on the x-axis, your y value is zero. Okay? We don't know the x values, and that's what we have to do math to figure out. Okay? But the y values are obvious when you're on the x-axis. It's zero. So how do you find the root? Step one is to plug zero in for y. If so you have a blank on your paper that you should be filling in right now, plug zero in for y is the first thing that you do. Plug zero in for y. That's how you find the roots. And then after that, you're going to solve for x. So plug zero in for y and solve for x. Yeah. For root, x-intercepts, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that's how you find roots on any function is you plug zero in for y. So I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I have to say your question is invalid because it will always be that way. But now we talked about something similar. You guys remember y-intercept? How do you find the y-intercept? You plug zero in for x, right? So if you want y-intercept, you plug in zero for x. If you want x-intercept, you plug zero in for y. Okay. So now these ones are a little bit more work. The, the y-intercepts were kind of chill. Um, but actually, most of the math we're doing to get those values today are not new. We've seen it today. Uh, not today. We've seen it before. So let's, let's begin here. So the directions say find the roots of the quadratic functions below. Here we go. So y equals 2, x minus 3 squared minus 18. All right, so what's the first step? Plug 0 in for y. And after that, we just solve for x. Now, we've solved for x before, so um, just shout out. What do I do here? Add 18 on both sides. I agree. This, if you guys are like, wait, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you were here for lesson uh, 6.3, yeah, this was our, I think it was Monday's lesson, yeah, 6.3. We, we talked about these types of problems. So the first thing you do is you get rid of those numbers that are outside of the parentheses. And if there's any adding or subtracting, you would do that first. What comes second? Good memory, good memory. We got we did division if possible is next. Division if possible is next. So this goes away now. And I have 18 over 2, which is 9. And on the right side, I've just got this now because the 2 canceled out thanks to the division. All right, and now uh, now what do I do? You take the square root on both sides. Good job. All right, so. Now, on this side, these just go away. They cancel each other out. On this side, two things are going to happen. First of all, you're going to take the square root, which is 3. But don't forget your plus and minus. It's a weird little detail that's easy to forget about, but you do get a plus and a minus. And since we have a plus and a minus, 
What does that mean I have to do next? You got to write two separate equations. Since we have plus and minus, we're going to have to write two separate equations. So I'm going to do one where it's a positive 3. And then I'm going to do another one where it's a negative 3. Uh-huh. And that's the place. Yeah, and that's where that parabola touches the x-axis, right? And you guys saw there were two, two places. Remember on the picture I showed you, there were two places where it touches? So you get two answers with these a lot of the times because a lot of times there can be two. All right, so one of the places it would touch the x-axis is at x equals 6. Another place where it would touch the x-axis would be at 0. Now you can write your answer like this. That's fine. You can also write your answer as a point. Because this is a point on the graph where it's touching the x-axis. How would I write this one as a point? 6, 0, right? Because the y value was 0. That's how we got the number. And this one would be 0 for x and 0 for y. So either one of these are fine ways of writing your answers. It doesn't matter. But what I want you guys to understand is we're finding the places where that parabola touches the x-axis. We're finding the places where the parabola touches the x-axis. All right, we good? Can move on, anybody still writing? All right, let's do another one. Uh, this time I'm gonna do less shout outs and more specific calling on, so be ready. Um, here we go. Um, so Cal, first step. That's right, so we write out the equation, but we're gonna make the y equal to zero. Uh, Jedrick, what would be, well, actually, I'm sorry, I pulled someone. Shermani, what's next? Not sure? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll help you out a little bit. Um, we want to get rid of the numbers outside the parentheses. So there's two of them, that guy and that guy. Um, the one that I want to get rid of first is two. How, how do I get rid of the 2? You're going to do the opposite. We're going to add it. Okay, so now that's gone over there. Okay, now Jedrick, I'm coming back to you now. So you got a little bit of a harder question. Um, how do you get rid of that? Yeah, so now you might have thought divide, because that's what we did in the last one, right? But this is a fraction, and I, I'm pretty sure we talked about this back on Monday when you have a fraction. Yeah? Yeah. So when you have a fraction, what you want to do is multiply instead. Okay? So multiply. Um, it's just easier. So I'm going to multiply by 2. Matter of fact, that 2 is going to cancel out this 2, right? But I also don't like the what here. The one is kind of irrelevant, but there's something else I don't like here. Not just the two, but also the, the negative. So how can we get rid of that? Multiply by a negative two. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative two here, and that's going to give me negative four equals, and this negative two cancels out the negative and the two, and the one is kind of irrelevant. Yes? What's up? Okay. Um, oh, Cynthia, make me cry. All right, Cynthia, what's next? Okay, we're gonna take the square root. Okay. 
All right. Tougher question for Aaliyah. What do I do here? Okay, let me give you a more specific question. I don't like that negative there. Oh, so the And? <laughs> no. Okay, all right. I'll quit torturing you. Um, let me go David. Divide by a negative. Go, Dave. You make it an I. Oh, Imaginary right. numbers. So, oh, but hey, you still get credit for giving me a shot there. All right, so you're going to take out the I. You're going to take out the I. All right. Um, next one. Uh, the doll. What's the square root of four? Square root of four. It is two. Now the i is in front, but when you have a normal number, like when you have a square root, i goes in the front. When you have a normal number, we like to put it in the back. It wouldn't be wrong if you did it the other way, but okay. Uh, let me ask. Michelle, what's next? Oh, two equations, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a positive 2i and a negative 2i. Um, David, um, what's next? Not sure. Okay. Um, well, I'll give you a hint. I want to get x. I want to solve for x. I want to get x by itself. So how do I get x? What would you do to get x by itself? We are going to minus something, but it's not the 2i. It's the 1. I want to get x by itself. So if I do that, that's gone. Now x is by itself, right? So I'm going to put negative 1 on this side. Now, we cannot combine these. These are not like terms. Since this is an imaginary, you can't combine them. Also, if you have a square root here, just a normal square root, you can't combine them either. So you just put it in front. So it's going to be negative 1 plus 2i equals x. And then for this one, same thing. We're going to minus 1 on both sides. It's going to be the same answer. It's just that it's minus 2i this time. Now, this is an imaginary answer. What were we finding again? Yeah, but on the graph, where it crosses the x-axis. So my question is, where does this graph cross the x-axis? I got an imaginary answer. What do you think that means? It doesn't touch the x-axis. So if you're ever trying to find roots and you get an imaginary answer, that means it doesn't touch the x-axis. You can make a little note of that. Since answer is imaginary, the parabola has no roots. I'll, I'll say it again in case you can't read my tiny handwriting there, but you can, you can put it in your own words if you need to. But basically, since the answer is imaginary, the parabola has no roots. It doesn't touch the x-axis. All All right, so there's a guided practice. Um, I'm not going to treat that one like a guided practice. I'm going to treat it like a student practice. I want you guys to do that guided practice one now on your own. Go ahead and just start going as far as you can with it. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. If it looks like we need more practice, we'll do the student practice. But go ahead and try the guided practice there. So I think we'll skip this student practice. If you guys just want to throw an X through it, that's fine. We're not going to do it. You guys were doing pretty good with that first one we did. All right. Example two. Find example two. All right. Here we go. A quadratic function has a vertex of 2, negative 3. So let's put a dot there. 2, negative 3. 2, negative 3. It has, now I'm going to label that, by the way, V. You don't have to do that necessarily, but I just want to remember that that one's the vertex, okay? 
Next, we have another point, 4, 5. So over 4, up 5. That's just some other random point. Can you guys sketch a parabola? Try it. Try to do it on your own. You, if you're using a pencil, if you have a pen, maybe wait and just kind of predict what you think it'll look like. But if you have a pencil, lightly sketch what you think the parabola would look like. You got to keep in mind, this is the vertex. That's important to get your sketch right. Would someone like to volunteer to sketch? Let me see if Steven, let me go Steven. Thank you, Maya. And then, perfect, nice job. There you go. So my only concern in this is that maybe you would have done something like this. The problem with that is, is that you're, you're making that the vertex. That's not the vertex this one is. So there's only one way to get it. You have to know which one's your vertex and you sketch it. So it should look something like that. Okay? All right, so there's my, there's my graph. Now, I don't know where it's touching the x-axis, and we're not being real picky about how we graph. So Steve might be a little off on where it touches the x-axis, but that's not his fault because we don't know yet. But we do see that it's touching twice. So our job is going to be... The next two things, we're going to write an equation for that. After that, we're going to actually find where it does touch the x-axis and we'll fix our picture so it looks right, okay? So here we go. Um, let's write an equation. Now this is steps from a, a while back, so I'll, I'll remind you of the process, okay? Um, let's label these points. This one was two negative three, and this one was four five. What letter is this 2 called? That's the H. You guys remember that? What's that guy? That's a K. It is a Y value, but it's a special Y value, so it gets a special name. It's the K. But you are right. It is a Y value. Now, these ones are not special up here. These are just a random point that I picked. So for those ones, they don't get special names. They're just regular old X and Y. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to plug them into this little equation right here. Exactly. By plugging them in, it's going to help us get the equation of that parabola. All right? So what do I plug in here for y? The random y value. Good. The a, I don't know that yet. There's no a over there. So I'm just going to leave that as a. What's my random x value? What's my h value? And then finally, k is negative 3. Now, since we're adding a negative 3, if you want, you can just write that as minus 3, um, whatever you prefer. All right, does anybody remember what we do next? Solve for what? For a. So we want to solve for a. And so let's do some order of operations. What would I do first to solve for a? Do your parentheses first, right? Good job. 4 take away 2 is 2. What do you guys think we do next? Square that 2. 2 to the second power is 4. And so I'm going to put the 4 in front of the a because that's usually what we do when there's a number and letter right next to each other. And here, I'm sure you guys can solve it from there, no problem. So um, it looks like a regular old one-step equation. So um, we have 5 equals 4a minus 3. To get a by itself, we would add 3 on both sides. And then we would divide. And I get a equals 2. Now, it's tempting to stop there. But is that is that the equation of a parabola? No. I'm trying to get the equation of a parabola. So that's a good thing to find, but that's not the answer. Okay. I'm out of space, so I'm going to have to erase. But I'll wait a second. Is anybody still writing numbers? I'll wait a second.
Okay, um, so what would the equation be? Will you come back to this equation again? You come back to this guy. And this time we're going to plug in three things to get the final answer. We're going to plug in our A value that we just found. We're going to plug in the H, good, and the K, and that's it. So my A was 2 the H was 2, and the K was negative 3. So my final answer is going to be 2, X minus 2 squared minus 3. That's the equation of that parabola. Good question. You knew that was coming. Nice job. So that, that leads us to the next part. So we started off this problem by having Steve sketch your picture for us. We said that it's a good picture, but it might be a little bit off, but we could tell that it's touching the x-axis somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to find where it actually does touch the x-axis. First, we need a, an equation, and we just found it. Next, we're going to find the root. Now, your question was, how do you find the root? Now, that's our key question for the day. So how do you find the roots? Kind of, but you got to do something first. Plug 0 in for y and then solve, right? So there it is. So we're going to plug 0 in for y, and then we're going to solve. I don't think I want to erase everything. Let me bring that back. I didn't want to do that. So let's do that. Let's plug 0 in for y, and let's solve for x. Now, sometimes you get nice answers, and sometimes you don't. If we don't get nice ones, we'll have to get our calculators out and figure out what they are. But um, let's see. I think today I was trying to do nice answers, but we'll see. All right, so step three, find the roots. The way you do that is by plugging 0 in for x. And it's not going to be a nice answer. I can already see it. It's not going to be a nice answer. All right, so here we go. And... Um, Alonzo, this is where we're going to do what you did earlier. So Alonzo didn't want to do the thing where you break down the 12. Remember that problem? So he just got his calculator out and did his square root. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to, for this, I'm just going to say, let's, if I want to find out where it touches the x-axis, I don't want a weird answer like 2 plus 2 square root of 3. I want it to be like a number that I can actually find. So let's find it. So we have 3 equals 2 times x minus 2 squared. I'm going to divide by 2. You guys can already see we've got a weird answer there, right? All right, so calculator people, help me out here. Use your phones if you would. Um, I'm going to need to take a square root. What's the square root of 1.5, please? It is? 1.4? It's 1.2? Okay. Thank you. And so for here, I'd make a little note to yourself. Use calculator. Now, you guys might be wondering, all right, now I'm getting confused, Mr. Bailey, because you want me to use a calculator here, but you didn't have us doing the last problem. When do you want me to use a calculator? Well, it doesn't matter really, right? Just you want to get the right answer. But on a multiple choice test, you can tell by looking at the answers. Do they have decimal answers available? Or do they have square root weird looking answers available? So just go by what it looks like they're looking for. All right. Um, so we're going to write two equations. X minus 2 is going to be equal to a positive 1.2. And X minus 2 is going to be equal to a negative 1.2. And once again, we're just going to use our calculators for this. So add 2. This one gives me x equals 3.2. Add 2. And I don't know what that is. Um, I want to say 0 0.8. You could check me on a calculator, but I think it's 0 0.8. All right, now let's take a look at See, your, your picture's really close. I, I would say, here's three, right? 
So 3.2 is a little bit more over. That's good. This guy here, though, you got him on the negative side, positive 0.8. So I'd say it's probably more like right here. So now I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to change that one a little bit. I'm going to make it look a little bit more right now by doing that. There we go. And we can label these points. This one is 0 0.8, and this one is 3.2. So there you guys have it. We've, we've got our answers here for the roots. So step one, we're going to draw a picture to the best of our ability. It's important to have the picture. That way you know where your H and K and X and Y are. Then you're going to find an equation, and then you're going to use that equation to get your roots and make your picture look a little bit more accurate. So there's a student practice there for you guys, and that will do it for the day. Uh, just a second, I'm going to look at something real quick. We're almost there. One more. Come on. Push forward. Push forward to the end. I divided um, three by two. So here we divided both sides by two. Three divided by two is one. Yeah. On the calculator. Oh. Uh, so they're different. Like on your phone, you would just. Put, I think you would type one point five, and then you push the square root button. On this one, you find the square root button first, and then you put one point five. So. And then flip your phone horizontally. Turn off your screen, Mom.
You can. I, I didn't specify, so you can do either that one or the last one. Yeah, that's fine. So long as you're not going to Can I see that that's just going it over my head. Like, it's just, oh, yeah. That wouldn't be the best. I don't know. Like, yeah. he's in my ear. You know, it's just. Uh, uh, we have two hands. I'm seeing uh, that. I'm seeing that. There's a whole whiteboard. So there's nothing to add. You have zero. It's an odd thing. So one of the points is one. Oh, it would be the cool yeah. name. It, it, but you know what? If even if it was up there, it would just be a really skinny graph. Yeah, yeah. It's still possible, but it's supposed to be down below. 